Alrighty guys, how's it going? Day Daddy here tonight and uh, I want to talk today about building your own deep learning, machine learning, um, AI rig or workstation, whatever, however you like to call it, um, for the beginner, for the student, for the person who's just getting into uh, this whole realm you know, of AI deep learning, machine learning, data science, this whole sphere. And the reason why I really want to make a video on this is A, uh, I'm building my own uh, machine. And two, I've been seeing a ton of videos on, you know, people building their own rigs. And I see titles like best data science rig or, you know, uh, craziest data science rig build. And it really makes you feel like, you should have this crazy monster rig for, you know, uh, deep learning. And to be, to be fair, for a lot of problems, you you definitely need something really robust and really substantial. But for the most part, for the person who's just getting into it, the student, um, you really don't. You uh, you need something that works and that's going to allow you to tackle most of the problems that you're interested in. And then as you scale and you get you know you get bigger and more experienced, then you can really figure out what works best for you. So to that kind of flavor, I want to say you really, you have to go do your own research in this. This is a video to help get you started um, in kind of a quick way. But um, I really, I, I very much encourage you, don't just blindly follow my build. Please, you know, go do your own research and, uh, you know, try to figure some of this stuff out for yourself. But to, you know, to, in the spirit of that. What type of GP? Um, I want to show you two videos. One is how to build a deep learning machine, everything you need to know by um, Alexa Gordick. Um, and this guy's really good. I watch a lot of his stuff. Uh, and this video is um, it's one of the ones that I watched that I actually really like. He's not you know, touting that you need the best rig. He's just kind of going through his process of how he built his. And while his is way more than what we're doing in this build, it's something to kind of give you a really good perspective on what we're doing and, and how we should how we should get there. And the other guy I really like, and there's actually a lot of guys I really like, but um and this guy's really good. His name's Jeff Heaton. He's with the University of uh Washington. Uh I think it's in St. Louis. But yeah anyway he's he's the University of Washington. And anyway, um this is his video on um basically how to choose a GPU for deep learning. And it's a little bit old but um, you know some of the, a lot of the good concepts still apply. So again, just do some of your own research, and I'll show some other references, um, you know, here as we're going through this. But again, do your own research and uh, try to figure out whether or not this build works for you and for your use cases. Okay, so first thing is PC Parts Picker, great website. Um, invaluable when you're building your own PC. It allows you to kind of go through and you can start a new build and you can click on CPU and then you can go through and select, you know, start with the CPU and then you can build everything else kind of off of that. And then, you know, it matches the price so you can kind of see uh, what it will cost and you, know, you can easily order the parts that you need. So, this isn't a PC parts picker video, so without further ado, we'll get into the actual components here. Um, first thing, CPU. So I chose the AMD Ryzen 550, and the reason is really this chart right here. So this is the most uh, performance you can get for the money, bottom line. Um, and especially today, it's $86. It was leapfrogged by the 40, uh, 4500 and, um, you know, today it's actually, it's leapfrogged back up. So these two are really normally neck and neck for which one is the best price per performance. It normally depends on deals that are going on. Um, but either way, even if this is a little bit lagging, I would still prefer this because this has the, the specs for what, that are more closely aligned with what we're really trying to do. So for us, that's uh, six cores, 3.6 giga gigahertz, um, base clock speed, and... Uh, 12 threads. So for us, this, this will be more than enough for what we want to do. And 
This way we can kind of minimize the amount of money we spend on the, C the CPU and maximize the amount of money we spend on uh, the GPU because the target for this build is basically to keep it around $1,000. All right, next thing, and this is one of the, one, one of the places where I made a mistake here is uh, I did not know that the AMD uh, Ryzen 5 series came with their own cooler. Some of the other, the higher ones don't, but this one does. So I bought a separate CPU cooler, aftermarket cooler, and um, really liked it. I ended up using it, but um, you definitely don't need it. So this is actually rated for 150 TDP, and this has only 65 watts or 60 watts, so this is way overkill for what we need. Um, but you know, I, I liked it, so I wanted to be extra safe and extra cautious, so I used it anyway, but you don't have to. But if you are going to go with it, recommend it. It's got great reviews and it's very, very quiet. All right. Next thing I'll talk about is the choice of motherboards. So I went with the MSI B550M Pro um, Micro ATX motherboard from MSI. So I chose this one mainly because it had great reviews and it has pretty much everything we're going to need uh, or could want for our build. And what I mean by that is it comes stock with Wi-Fi 5 uh, and Bluetooth, I believe, Bluetooth 5 as well. I actually don't know that. But basically, it comes with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, it's got, uh, you know, it'd be better to show you on this picture. Um, it's got one 16 lane PCI slot and two one lane PCI slots, which is more than enough for what we need. It's got tons of um, ports and plugs for everything that, you know, I'm going to need, hopefully everything that you're going to need. Uh, and, you know, so really it's a good solid option for not a whole lot of money. You can find some cheaper ones, but uh, for me, this is what fit the bill. I think this is also on sale at the time when I bought it and uh, also has really good reviews. So, okay. Um, next is the choice of RAM. And for me, the first the first choice was, do you wanna go DDR5 or DDR4? And really you should have made that choice before you even looked at the CPU and motherboard. But for us, we don't, <laughs> we're not really even anywhere close to uh, needing DDR5. So uh, it's went with DDR4 at uh, 3200 megahertz, which is a, you know, I think it's a standard speed or the most cost effective speed. Um, and it went with the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. And Corsair is a great brand. Um, I think 32 gigs is probably fine for what we're going to need in this build. And I bought RGB, I paid a little bit more for it because um, I think it looks nicer in the case and it kind of illuminates the components a little bit better. Um, I will say though, this is one place where you can save money. If you want to go with, you know, no RGB, you can go with G skill is another good brand. And I think they were about 65 bucks. So you could, you know, do even a little, a little bit better here. Um, next we're going to talk about our storage. So I chose the Kingston NVMe, um, drive at two terabytes. And, um, you know, this isn't, this isn't the best. Like for example, if you want the if you want the best here, you probably need to go with Samsung. Um, it's probably twice as fast, but it's also twice the price. Um, so I really I went with a budget option. I liked Kingston because it was a a good value for two terabytes um, of NVMe storage. Is basically the summary there. So, but again, this is also a place where you could save money. You could just go with SSD. And uh, I think like Team Group has a SSD, a two terabyte SSD for like 40, 50 bucks. So, um, okay, this is one place where I didn't want to save any money. I wanted to get, um, you know, basically the best bang for the buck here. This is the, probably the most important part of the build. And um, for this, I'm going to reference this chart. So this is... Um, Tim, uh, Detmers, I think that's how you say his name, but he's kind of, he's pretty well known in the field of deep learning. Um, 
and this is a pretty recent blog post by him, but basically which GPUs to get for deep learning. And, um, you know, he kind of outlines a lot of stuff uh, in this article that he writes. So it's very good. I highly encourage you to go through it. Um, but for us, I guess what we really care about right now is this relative performance per U.S. dollar. So for us, we are looking at the RTX 3060. And the reason I chose this is because it's kind of middle of the pack here. So not the best price per performance. But these up here, these are about $2,000. So these are way out of our league or way out of our price point. Um, so are the basically everything up here pretty much. You might be able to catch one of these on sale, but this is going to be, even if you catch it on sale, it's going to be more than the, the cost of our, the rest of our build. So this one we can get the RTX 3060, we can get for about 350 bucks and it has middle of the pack performance. And the most important part about this though, is this has greater than 11 gigabytes of VRAM, which means you're going to start being able to get in problems. Like you could run, um, you could train transformers, um, you can do some like small computer vision stuff, uh, but it allows you to start to start to get into bigger problems. So that's really what, in my opinion, more than performance, at least for me, um, is the amount of RAM available in the GPU. That's hugely important and allows you to tackle a lot bigger problems without having to worry about how you're going to store your data and offload it. It really just helps to have a lot of RAM or a lot of VRAM in your CP or your, your GPU. So anyway, um, this is why I ended up choosing the 3060. Okay. Next is the case. And simply put, this case was just a delight, wonderful to build with. Um, I think it looks sweet. Uh, Tons of airflow. It even comes with two case or two uh, case fans. So, you know, not a whole lot else to say other than it just it it really exceeded my expectations. And as you can see, it did the same thing for a lot of other people as well. Um, this is just kind of your standard run of the mill power supply. EVGA is a pretty good brand. It's you know bronze certified, so not the most efficient, but you know you get it for a pretty good price. So that's pretty much all there is to say about that. Um, and then this is one of those kind of gray areas here. You don't need the, the case fans. I mean, the case itself already comes with two case fans. Um, so this is kind of an optional thing. I bought these because I vainly, I think that makes the case look really nice. And I like the lighting it provides. These are also, um, they do, they do do a better job of cooling. Uh, so you know, this is, this is take it or leave. You know, you could absolutely leave this off and, you know, the bill wouldn't suffer. So anyway, but if you are going to go with fans that aren't stock, these are fantastic. They're modular. So for example, these all snap together. So you only have to put one, uh, only one set of cabling out either side. Uh, and it really cleans up all of your cable management and makes things really, really nice. So highly recommend these fans. Um, they're also highly rated as well. So, you know, a lot of other people like that as well. Okay. So now that we have touched on all that stuff, let's go and let's actually figure out what it would be if you went with the absolute bare bones base build. So this is for the CPU. So we'll call it $87. I'm just going to use round numbers to make everything easy. So we're not going with any extra CPU cooler. We're going to use a stock one that comes with the 550 or 5500. Um, we're going to go with 120 for the motherboard, uh, which you could probably find a little bit cheaper, maybe a hundred bucks. Um, we're going to go with 65 for the non RGB Ram. We're going to go with 50 for the SSD instead of the, uh, sorry, instead of the NVMe storage, we're going to keep, this is the most important thing. We're going to keep the GPU 
because that's where really all the, this whole build centers around. Um, you could go the cheaper case, but I would highly recommend you don't because sometimes they're really a pain to build with. Um, the power supply, you could get a little bit cheaper, but I don't really know that, you know, I don't know about all that. Um, so yeah, anyway, it comes out to be about 64 bucks or sorry, <laughs> it comes out to be about 830 bucks. You could probably get it under, under 800 bucks if you wait for sales on these particular components and you're flexible. Like for example, you really shop around for, for another motherboard that works. Um, you know, you could, you could get it cheaper. So I'm confident you could probably get this for about 750 bucks bare minimum. Um, and maybe even less depending on sales. But, uh, anyway, that's the bare minimum for this build or kind of a, probably a good average bare minimum. Um, so I think that's, that's attainable for most people. I mean, it, it's a lot, but I think if you save, this could probably be significantly more realistic than about 90% of the other builds that I've seen. So that's, that's the reason why we're doing this is to make this attainable for most people. Okay. Uh, and then the last thing I want to touch on is choice of operating system. So I did not select one. I was originally going to use my old windows key, but I realized it was an O from, it was basically OEM. So I wasn't able to transfer it. Um, so there are a couple options if you would like Windows. I would just recommend that you go to Linux straight away. Just use Ubuntu or whatever your favorite Linux distro is. And um, you know, you'll be better off for it because this is a deep learning workstation or you know, uh machine learning data science workstation, you're better off with Linux anyway, because a lot of the stuff runs out of the box with Linux. But uh if you do want Windows, um I would recommend doing Windows plus um, WSL or Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, and, you know, if you don't want to pay a hundred and something bucks for a real key, you can go to the third party, reputable third party, make sure it's reputable. Otherwise you might get screwed. Um, or transfer your key. You can also look to see if um, there is a, your school, or if you're a student, you can look and see if you can get what's called a uh, student edition or a student, student key. Um, something like that. Some universities will offer it. Um, but basically, you know, you can do all those things or you can just do what I did and you can just buy it from Microsoft and pay your money and move on down the road. The reason I did that is because I wanted to be able to transfer it from build to build uh, in case I build another computer, I'll just transfer the key. So I just wanted that, um, transferability. So I'll have to pay for this again. So, okay guys. Um, that's pretty much it for this build. Uh, I really hope that you enjoyed it and I hope this made things a little bit more clear and gave you at least a blueprint for um, what you can do or what is possible. And uh, another thing, I will link everything I've used, everything I, I showed in this video and more in the description to kind of help give you uh, some more guidance on how to start your first build. Um, okay, guys. That's it for this one, and I'll see you in the build video. All righty, guys, that about does it for today. Uh, if you like the content, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe so I can continue to grow and produce better and better content for you. And if you really like the content, you might even consider buying me a coffee in the information pad, too. That will be in the video description. If none of that sounds good, at least just give me some feedback in the comments. Let me know how I'm doing, if anything's unclear, or if there are things that I can improve on. Um, but above all, guys, thanks again. Appreciate you watching, and have a great rest of the day.